Within this video, I'm gonna teach you how you can continue training with jumper's knee and how you can actually heal your patella tendonitis without stopping any of your workout sessions, sporting activities, or training. What's up everybody, Nathaniel Morton here with NathanielMorton.com helping you become bigger, stronger, faster, and more explosive. In today's video, I'm going to teach you how to continue training with jumper's knee or patellar tendonitis and how you can actually heal your patellar tendonitis without stopping any of your training, sporting activities, or workout sessions. But before I get into this video, let me quickly remind you that if you like this video and comment jump, J-U-M-P, down below in the comment section, I will send you over a free body weight vertical jump training program that you can use to increase your vertical jump and become more explosive. If if you follow me on Instagram at Nathaniel Morton and you tag three people on any one of my posts, I will send you a free weight training, vertical jump training program. And if you want both of those programs, just do both of those things. Comment, jump down below, like the video, and then go over to my Instagram, follow me and tag three people and I'll send you both of those programs. But okay, let's jump into it. How to continue training with jumper's knee and how to actually cure your patella tendonitis without stopping any of your activities. Okay, there's three things you can do, and I would do these three things in order. I would first try to fix the contributing factors that lead to patellar tendonitis, so low ankle dorsiflexion, tight muscles, weak glutes, low hip mobility, all of these eight factors. I would first target those eight factors and try to fix those things. If those don't work, which they probably will, they will for most people, unless your patellar tendonitis is really bad. Those things will work mostly, most likely for most people. If they don't work, then that's where you lessen the load on your tendons. Now keep in mind, this is if you don't want to stop your training. If you can stop your training, I would, because there's a cause to your patellar tendonitis. There's something that is causing the pain and the discomfort in your tendons. Your tendons are overloaded due to some previous cause. Might it be squatting too heavy? Might it be basketball? Maybe it's vertical jump training? Maybe it's running? Maybe it's soccer or dancing? I don't know what it is, but something is causing your patellar tendonitis. And the best way to get rid of your patellar tendonitis is to get, get rid of the cause of that patellar tendonitis and do these eight um, contributing factors at the same time. So if you remove the cause of your patellar tendonitis and you increase your ankle dorsiflexion, you increase the, or you, you loosen your muscles, you increase the strength of your glutes and the muscles around your knee, you improve your hip mobility, you do all of these factors and you remove that, that is the best way to get rid of patellar tendonitis. However, this video is on how to continue training with patellar tendonitis. So if you are in the middle of a sporting session, some people can't, stop training, some people don't want to stop training. I personally didn't want to stop training. So if you don't want to stop training, then focus on these eight factors. Move to number two, lessen the load on your tendons. So the workouts that you are currently doing, whatever you're doing, if you're doing leg workouts, you're going to lessen the load by lessening all of the weight that you are using. So if you're doing squats, for example, if I am squatting 365 pounds and I can do it, but my knees hurt, what I'm going to do is go way back to the basics and put on 135, okay, 135, and I'm gonna remove, see we are removing the cause of the patellar tendonitis because our tendons are overloaded, remove that cause without stopping the actual workouts, you can just lessen the load of the workouts. So lessen the weight, if you're running and you usually run six miles a day, tone that back and run two miles a day or run six miles three or four days a week. If you're doing soccer or you're practicing basketball, try to lessen the load of whatever you're doing that is causing your patellar tendonitis. That's number two. And that's only if num step number one doesn't work. If step number one doesn't work, then you have to move to that and you have to lessen the load. And then if that doesn't work, then your tendons, your, you, you are really deep into the stages of patellar tendonitis. Your tendons are really messed up and they can actually get really, really, really bad if you don't stop. So I would suggest 
um, completely replacing your training with rehab. So completely replacing your knee workouts with um, exercises and routines and stretches that are going to rehab your knees and build back your knees and your glutes bigger, stronger, and faster. So you're gonna have to completely get rid of whatever you're doing now and completely replace those workouts with knee routines. So your leg workouts now become knee workouts and then you work your way back up, okay? So, and I'm gonna talk about all of these in depth right now. Contributing factor number one, low ankle dorsiflexion. And guys, very quickly, uh, before I get into that, do yourself a favor and get this book, Beating Patellar Tendonitis by Martin Coben. This is by far, by far, the best resource that I have ever found on patellar tendonitis and jumper's knee. And trust me, I've done a lot of research. I've gone through a lot of stuff by myself. I've helped a lot of other people. And this is by far the best resource that I've ever found on patellar tendonitis. And a lot of the stuff that I am telling you here today, I actually got from this book. So do yourself a favor and get this book. It'll be linked down below in the description for you. So low ankle dorsiflexion. Low ankle dorsiflexion has been linked to patellar tendonitis in basketball players and volleyball players. So if we increase the dorsiflexion of our ankles and we increase the flexibility of our Achilles, that will help um, alleviate that contributing factor of patellar tendonitis. And don't worry, guys, at the end of this video, I'm gonna show you a full routine that I've put together that covers all eight of these factors. So at the very end, I will show you a routine that you can go through. I've actually also made a full follow along video that will be linked down in the description. So you can click that video, you can follow along with me as I do a knee routine that alleviates all of these contributing factors and helps you get rid of all of them at the same time to cure your patellar tendonitis while you continue training. So low ankle dorsiflexion, that is number one. Contributing factor number two are tight calves. So your calves actually run along the back of your leg and the back of your knee. So if your calves are tight, your knees always have to work against additional resistance when you are extending. So two things that you should do for your calves. Number one is you should stretch your calves twice a day for at least 60 seconds each, each leg. So do a calf stretch or you know, put your, prop your foot up on something, stretch your calves 60 seconds each leg, once in the morning and once at night, or figure out two times per day you can do that. And number two, you should foam roll your calves, and I would do that once per day. So that will alleviate the tightness in your calves and help you get rid of that patellar tendonitis and alleviate that contributing factor. Contributing factor number three are tight quads, very similar to tight calves. If your muscles are tight, guys, if your quads are tight, it's going to be pulling on your patellar tendon, therefore causing excess stress that doesn't need to be there. So if you loosen up your calves through stretches and through foam rolling, you're going to alleviate that. You're going to get rid of the tight quads and get rid of the extra stress and extra tension that is being placed on your patellar tendons. So that is number four or I'm sorry, that's number three, alleviate the tight quads. Factor number four are tight hamstrings, same as tight calves and tight quads. Your hamstrings, they run along the back of your leg and the back of your knee. They can put excess stress on your patellar tendon, make it work against additional resistance that it does not have to. So you need to stretch and foam roll your hamstrings, but also if you have tight hamstrings, it's going to be difficult for you to hinge at the hip, which is going to play a factor in your jumping mechanics. So if you are not jumping and landing properly due to your tight hamstrings or your weak hamstrings, then that can play a role and be a contributing factor to patellar tendonitis. So strengthen your hamstrings and loosen your hamstrings, stretch and foam roll, and that will help cure your patellar tendonitis. Contributing factor number five is weak glutes. And this is a huge one for a lot of athletes because glutes are neglected among a lot of athletes. So weak glutes cause you to have less control over your thighs. If you have less control over your thighs, then you have less control when you are running, jumping, or landing. If you have less control when you are running, jumping, or landing, that means your thighs and your legs are more likely to rotate inwards, which is a part of 
improper jumping mechanics, and if you rotate your thighs inwards when you are running, jumping, or landing, then your knees can easily get off track. So weak glutes basically mean that your knees get off track, and if you just strengthen your glutes, then your knees will get back on track and they will track properly up and down that joint, okay? So weak glutes is number five, and if you fix that, that will that is a main one, a major one, when it comes to curing your patella tendonitis. Contributing factor number six is low hip mobility. And this one is very similar to weak glutes because low hip mobility doesn't allow you to control your thighs so you rotate inward when you're running, jumping, and landing. And also squatting. If you have low hip mobility, it's going to be harder for you to properly squat and have the proper mechanics for a lot of other activities like running, jumping, and landing. And that is going to contribute to your patella tendonitis. So if you fix your hip mobility, you can fix your patella tendonitis. Contributing factor number seven is wrong foot alignment. Okay, so these are my feet. Your feet are supposed to be straight on like this when you're doing athletic movements. Let's take a side shuffle, for example. When people are doing a side shuffle, you know like an athlete, athletes, they shuffle one way, they shuffle, you're, you're sliding. If you're playing basketball, you're, you're in defense, you're, you're side shuffling, okay? One major problem that people have with their foot alignment is they turn their feet out when they are side shuffling. When you are squatting, a lot of people turn your feet out too far. Um, your feet are supposed to be out a little bit, not, not out crazy, uh, crazy far, but if you turn your feet out, that actually puts your knees off axis and your knees can also run off the track by doing that, okay? It also puts more stress on the joints up because your ankles collapse, so it puts more stress on the joints further up like your knees and your hips. So if you don't have your feet straight, if you're turning them out too much or in too much, that is not good. So wrong foot alignment, improper foot alignment, it's also a contributing factor to patella tendonitis. And if you fix that and you start working on your mechanics, then that can help cure your patella tendonitis. The last contributing factor that we have is wrong jumping technique. And there's two parts to this. There's when you're actually jumping and then there's when you are landing. So there's two things that might be wrong here. So check yourself and think about yourself when I'm talking about these. So when you are jumping, if your hamstrings are weak and your glutes are weak, then you are most likely jumping mainly with your quads. This is very common in two foot jumpers. Now I'm not saying that it's bad to be a two foot jumper, but if you are a two foot jumper, which I am myself, you are most likely jumping mainly with your quads, which can place a lot of stress on your patella tendonitis, or on your patella tendon, tendons causing patella tendonitis. So what you need to do for that is just strengthen up your glutes and strengthen up your hamstrings and that will alleviate that. They need to catch up with your quads. They all need to be even so there's no imbalances. And the second part of it is when you're landing. When you land, if you are not hinging at the hip, which this, these are my hips, if you are hinging at the hip like this, going down this way, okay, hinging at the hip, you are placing the stress on your hamstrings and your glutes, which is what you want to do. If you are not hinging at the hip and you're just landing when you jump, you are putting most of the stress on your quads and on your patella tendons. So whenever you jump and wherever you land, you need to make sure to bend your knees a little bit, but also put your torso down, hinge at the hip and go down this way. Not crazy far, but just make sure that you hinge at the hip whenever you land and that will place the stress on your hamstrings and your glutes instead of your quads and your patella tendon tendons. So that's the last one, wrong jumping technique and those are the eight factors that can contribute to patella tendonitis. If you fix these eight contributing factors, most likely your tendonitis is going to go away. You'll be able to continue training as long as you do the routine that I'm going to show you at the end of this video. So fix these eight things and your patella tendonitis will most likely heal itself within three months, okay? Everybody's different. Some people are really deep into patella tendonitis. Some people have just just recently gotten patella tendonitis. Some people are, are really bad off and some people aren't that bad yet. So um, depending on how bad your knees are is going to is going to depend on how long it takes to cure. But anywhere from two weeks to three months, these eight things should heal your knees. And if you are doing these and they're feeling better, but by three months you're not exactly all the way cured, then just continue to do these if you see progress, okay? But listen, 
if you are doing these for three months and you see no progress, you, you've done all of the things, you've done the routine that I gave you at the end of this video, you've done it every single day, you followed everything step by step and you are still not getting better, then I'm sorry, but you need to stop doing the things that are causing your patellar tendonitis. And you can do that in one of two ways. Number one, you can lessen the load on your tendons because if your knees hurt, they are overloaded. Your tendons are overloaded. There are too, there's too much load on your tendons and your tendons cannot handle it. So you can either lessen the load or you can completely change your workouts, okay? So lessening the load. If you're doing a vertical jump workout, what you can do is reduce the weight in the reps of all of the exercises that you are doing. So reduce the weight, reduce the reps, start from zero and progressive overload very slowly. The reason that you need to progressive overload slowly is because your muscles grow and adapt to stimulus much faster than your tendons do. It takes three times as long for your tendons to adapt to a stimulus than your muscles. So you might be able to squat 365 with your muscles, but your tendons can't handle that yet. So if you lessen the load and you start at say 135 pounds on the squat, one plate on each side, you do that. I would do that for three weeks before I progressive overload so that my tendons can catch up and my tendons can adapt to that. So that's the, the main thing is progressive start lessen the load and then progressive overload very slowly from there so you're basically starting from ground zero if all this stuff doesn't work start from ground zero and slowly progressive overload back up to where you were okay and if that doesn't work if your knees still hurt then you have to completely re replace your training with rehab and let's let's go back to this one real quick lessen the load you can lessen the load on running you can lessen the load on practicing you can lessen the load on soccer on basketball lessen the load on whatever activities you are doing that are causing your patellar tendonitis all that means is do less of them okay do less and then if that doesn't work number three completely replace your training with rehab okay there's there's no shame in this game because this is going to help your tendons the quickest, okay, this is going to be the fastest way to recover, is to completely take that cause, if it's basketball, if it's running, if it's jumping, if it's dance, if it's soccer, if it's volleyball, whatever that is, throw it out the window, don't do it anymore, and completely replace your training with rehab. So with the routine that I'm going to give you at the end of this video. So that is the fastest way, the quickest way to cure your patellar tendonitis. But those are the two things that you can do to continue training, to continue your sports, to continue all of your activities while cure, curing your patellar tendonitis at the same time. Now let's recap, okay? Let's go through everything that we just went through very quickly and then I'll give you the routine. Number one, if you wanna continue training, you wanna continue your sports, continue all your activities, but heal your patellar tendonitis at the same time, you need to cure these eight factors. If these eight factors, if you've done them and they don't work, then you need to continue these eight factors at the same time that you lessen your load, lessen your load. If this doesn't work, then you need to completely Replace, replace all of your training with these eight factors and with the exercise that I'm going to give you at the end of this. So that is how you cure your patellar tendonitis while training and how you cure your patellar tendonitis if you stop your training. Okay, so that's that. Let's move into the routine that is going to go through all of these eight factors, fix all of these contributing factors at the same exact time, besides the last two, I guess. The last two you kind of have to do on your own. You have to work on your foot alignment and you have to work on your wrong jumping technique. But all the other ones, all the tight muscles, the weak glutes, the weak muscles that surround your knee, the low ankle dorsiflexion, all of that is going to be fixed with this routine. The first thing that you are going to do for this routine is you are going to warm up. What I like to do is I like to get on an exercise bike for five to 10 minutes and I like to warm up my knees. After I'm done with my exercise bike, I like to foam roll and I like to self massage with the foam roller my calves, my quads, my hamstrings, my IT band, all the muscles in my leg. I like to 
remove that fascia, alleviate that tension in my legs with foam rolling in all of the muscles that might contribute to my patellar tendonitis. So first is the bike to warm up your knees, then is foam rolling for five minutes on all the muscles that might contribute to patellar tendonitis. The third thing that I do is I do four stretches. Actually, I, I normally do three stretches. I won't even say four. If you do four, it's better, but I normally do three. So I do the couch stretch, I do 60 seconds, each leg. Then I do a hamstring stretch, 60 seconds each leg. Then I do a quad stretch, 60 seconds each leg. And the fourth one that you could put in there if you wanna do better than I do is a calf stretch would be great. And that way you hit your calves, your quads, your hamstrings, you have done your foam rolling, you have done your stretching, and you have alleviated all the tightness in those muscles and taking that stress off of your patellar tendon. After I do that, I do what is called a hip swivel and I do 10 repetitions each direction of the hip swivel. Okay, and what this does is it challenges internal and external rotation of the hips and that works on low hip mobility. Okay, that works on the mobility of our hips. So. After I do 10 repetitions each direction of the hip swivel, I do a 90-90 stretch and I stretch that for about 30 seconds. Then I switch and I stretch the other way for 30 seconds. Then I go back to the normal 90-90 and I actually challenge my hip mobility and my external rotation again and I do 10 leg lifts with the opposite leg of the way I'm facing. Okay, so I'll put videos up on the screen, but. 10 leg lifts, so I do my hip swivel, 10 repetitions each side, then I do the 90-90 sit, 30 seconds each side stretching, then I do 10 repetitions each side to challenge that external rotation, okay? After that, what I do is I do a calf stretch and I do 10 repetitions of pumping my calves to, um, to loosen the calves up, then I do a calf stretch for 30 seconds each leg, and then I do a dorsiflexion drill, okay? So, so far, we've warmed up our knees, we've done the bike, then we've done the foam roller to work on our tight calves, our tight quads, our tight hamstrings, and our IT band. Then we've done four stretches, I've done three, you might have done four, which works on our calves, our quads, our hamstrings. Then we've worked on hip mobility and stretching our glutes, so that's hip mobility, a little bit of weak glutes right here, worked on these two. Then what we do is we do a calf pump, 10 repetitions each size with the calf, or each leg with the calf pump. Then we stretch our calves, working on right here, stretch our calves 30 seconds each time. Then we do a dorsiflexion drill, 10 repetitions with our dorsiflexion drill, trying to move your knee past your toe as much as possible without lifting your heel up off the ground. Okay, so try to improve that range of motion. Try to get the knee past the toe as much as you possibly can without doing it too far, okay, without your heel coming up off the ground. After you do 10 repetitions, you're going to hold it for about 10 seconds to 30 seconds, stretching your Achilles, okay? So that's going to work on your low ankle dorsiflexion. Then you would switch and you do the other leg, 10 repetitions for the dorsiflexion drill, and then you would hold that dorsiflexion stretch and that Achilles stretch for 10 to 30 seconds, okay? So that's working on this, we've worked on that, 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 worked on low hip mobility, a little bit of weak glutes. Now we're gonna move on to strengthening the glutes, okay? So what we're going to do is three sets of 10 of glute bridges. We're going to use a mini band, we're gonna wrap it around a little bit above our knees, we're going to lie on our back, we're going to go up into a hip extension, into a glute bridge, and then we're going to do a hip abduction. Okay, abduction, so push your knees out, okay? And you're doing all of this slow and controlled. Think of this more like movement technique instead of a workout. This is not a workout, this is movement technique. Everything is slow and it's controlled and it's flowing. And it's okay if you do feel some pain during this, you shouldn't feel tons of pain. And as you go on through this workout, through this routine, um, your pain will will lessen and lessen as your knees get better, as your knees get more healthy. So three sets of 10 of glute bridges, then we're gonna turn on our side. Three sets of 10 of clams, also working on our weak glutes, okay? So that's where we have this that focuses on our weak glutes. Then we're going to strengthen some muscles up around our knee. What we're going to do is take that mini band or get a different resistance band. Everything is linked down below in the description. The book that I have for you, um, all of the resistance band, 
bands, a playlist that I have with every single video that I've put out so far on how to cure your knee pain. Everything is down below in the description, okay? But TKEs, terminal knee extensions, what you're gonna do is wrap your band around a pole or a squat rack or a railing or whatever you have, put it around the back of your knee and you're going to do a quad flex. So put your toes together, let your one knee go out and then flex it back to the position standing straight and tall with your other leg, okay? So the, the knee that the band is around, you wanna flex that quad, okay? So flex that quad. Three sets of 10 repetitions for the TKEs and rotate, make sure you do each leg. Do, if you only have one bad knee, it is important for you to do both knees, always do both knees so that you don't create imbalances. Chances are you already have imbalances if your knees hurt, so don't create any more but by only strengthening one. So do both knees, three sets of 10 repetitions for the terminal knee extensions. Then what you're going to do is eccentric squats on a slanted board is the best way to do it. If you don't have a slanted board, I will link it down below in, in the description, the one that I use, or you could just prop up a piece of wood, or if you're at LA Fitness, you could prop up a, a platform, prop something up so that, is, that it is on a slant. You could put two 2.5 pound weights or five pound weights under your heels, but make sure your heels are elevated and you're going to do body weight eccentric squats. What this does is this actually places all of the stress, all of the tension straight directly on your patella tendons. There's nowhere to hide with this exercise. If your patella ten tendons are messed up, you're going to feel it with this exercise. Now, at first, only go down as far as you can go. As you continue to do this and as your knees get stronger and your patella tendons get stronger, you will eventually be able to go all the way down with the eccentric um, squats on a slanted board. But at first, just go down as far as you can to where you don't feel pain for three sets of 10 repetitions each. Now, placing heat or elevating your heels, placing weights under your heels or standing on a slanted board actually places all of the load directly onto your patella tendon. And by doing body weight and by going slow, you wanna go slow for these, three to five seconds down, and you can even help yourself up if you need to, or three to five seconds down and then back up, okay? By going slow and by having your heels elevated, this actually puts stress on the patella tendon on the patellar tendon, and you'll be able to heal your patella tendon actually heal it through this exercise because after you do the eccentric squats, then you go rest and you sleep and you eat and you recover and your tendons build back up bigger and stronger. It's the same thing as if you're in the gym, if you do a bicep curl, you actually don't build muscle in the gym, you break your muscle down and then when you build your muscles up bigger, faster, stronger is when you go home and you eat and you sleep and you rest and recover. Same thing with your tendons. So eccentric squats with your heels elevated, go down slow, three to five seconds, and, th or, and three sets of 10 repetitions. This will actually heal your knee. Okay. After you do that, you go back to the four stretches. You have one more round of the four stretches. You have the couch stretch. You have the hamstring stretch, the quad stretch, and the calf stretch. And then you are done. Okay. And that is the routine that I have for you that is actually going to heal your patella tendonitis. It is going to eliminate all of these factors except these last two, but it will eliminate all these factors. It will help your ankle dorsiflexion. It will help your tight calves. It will loosen your quads, loosen your hamstrings. It will strengthen your glutes. It will loosen and make you have better hip mobility. It will also um, strengthen the muscles around your knee and it will actually strengthen your patellar tendons with the eccentric squats and the TKEs. So this routine that I just gave you, that is my secret routine. It is the best routine out that is going to help you heal your knees while you are still training and eliminate all these factors while you are still training. So ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much if you are still with me. I know it's been a long video. It's been long for me too. It's late at night. But if you are still with me, I will answer any questions down below in the comment section that I didn't yet answer, okay? Because I know there's a lot of information here. There's a lot of information that I probably left out. Remember, if you want a free body weight jump program, comment jump down below and like this video and I will send that over to you. If you want a weight training vertical jump program for free, go to my Instagram at Nathaniel Morton. 
follow me and then tag three people on any one of my posts and I will DM, DM you and I will give you the, that program for free. Like this video if you like it, subscribe if you haven't already. And ladies and gentlemen, take action because action is everything. Knowledge is not power, it is only potential power until you take action on what you know. Just because you know all this, doesn't mean that you will get results. You will get results when you take action on it, take it to the gym with you, and do it for yourself. Then you will see results, and then you will heal your knees. I will see you guys in the next video.